We'll be reading section 27.2, Human Impacts on Land Resources. It can be found on page 716. How much land do you think is necessary to grow the food and provide the other materials that you consume and use? Each year, a typical person in North America consumes resources equal to the renewable yield from approximately 5 HA, about 12.35 acres of forest and farmland. Through our use of mineral resources, food, lumber, and living space, humans have a significant impact on Earth's surface. Extra extraction of mineral resources do you spend much time talking on the telephone? Perhaps you use a microwave oven to heat up after school snacks. Many of the materials in many of the materials in telephones and microwave ovens are derived from land. Modern societies require huge amounts of land resources, including iron, aluminum, copper, sand, gravel, and limestone. Unfortunately, the extraction of these resources often distributes large areas of Earth's surface. Finding a balance between the need of, for mineral resources and controlling the environmental change caused by extraction can be difficult. Surface mining. Mineral and ore deposits found just beneath Earth's surface, such as iron, bauxite, aluminum ore, copper, coal, and gold, can be Extracted through mining techniques that involve removing huge amounts of overlaying soil and rock, as shown in figure 27.6. Unfortunately, extracting land resources for resources in this way completely changes the landscape. Underground mining. Underground mining, also called subsurface mining, is used where mineral resources lie deep under the ground. Underground mining is less disruptive to Earth's surface than sub than surface mining, but it still has impacts on the environment. For example, although the underground mine in figure 27.7 cannot be seen, the mountains of waste rock dug from under the ground are clearly visible. Rainwater seeping through these piles of mining waste, mining waste can dissolve toxic metals as well as other chemicals and move them into nearby streams and rivers where they will cause water pollution. Although many mining companies build large holding ponds to contain polluted water until it can be treated, these ponds sometimes leak. Responsible mining companies make efforts to protect the land during mining operations. In the United States, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977 requires mining companies to restore the land to its original contours and to replant vegetation in the process of reclamation. Figure 27.8 shows a strip mined area both before and after reclamation. Although reclamation repairs such of the, much of the damage that surface mining causes, it can be extremely difficult to restore land to its original contours, as you will discover in the mini lab on the following page. Agriculture. In natural ecosystems such as forests, Many species of organisms interact with one another and with their environment to create a stable ecosystem. For example, scientists have identified as many as 300 species of trees on just one HA of land in a tropical rain forest. Even city parks can, be, can have a wide variety of different species called biodiversity. In a recent study of a park in Hartford, Connecticut, scientists found that and identified a total of 1,369 species of organisms in just one 24-hour period. Ecosystems, have, ecosystems that have high biodiversity are more stable than those with fewer species because they are able to recover more quickly from harmful events such as disease and drought. Monoculture. When land is cleared for food production, a biological a biologically diverse ecosystem is often replaced with a single plant species, such as corn or wheat. The planting of just one species in a field is called monoculture. Growing a monoculture crop makes it easier for a human to sow, fertilize, and harvest a crop, but this efficiency also brings risks. For example, in a monoculture of corn, illustrated in figure 27.9, a fungus or a parasite that destroys corn can spread rapidly and destroy the entire crop. In contrast, in a field that contains several species of crops, disease organisms cannot spread as quickly because they have a more difficult time finding the target species. Even if the entire crop, corn crop is such a field, in such a field is eventually lost, the farmer can still harvest the other crops growing in the field. Pesticides. A variety of pesticides, including 
fungicides, and insecticides have played an important role in boosting food production worldwide by eliminating organisms that destroy crops. However, the use of pesticides has drawbacks. Some pesticides remain in the environment for long periods of time. As they slowly acclimate in the food chain, they may harm they may harm beneficial organisms such as fishes and birds. Some pesticides also kill beneficial insect predators along with destructive insects. The, when pesticides kill decomposers such as worms, overall fertility of topsoil deteriorates. In addition, insect populations can quickly develop resistance <clears throat> to the in pesticide, causing some farmers to use ever increasing amounts in an attempt to control pests. Further problems are created when wind and rain carry pesticides away from a farm and cause pollution in nearby waterways, topsoil. It can, make thousands, it can take thousands of years for topsoil to form and thus, once it is lost, it is hard to replace. Erosion of topsoil occurs when forests or grasslands are cleared for the first time, but even established farms can suffer from the loss of topsoil. As shown in figure 2710, whenever fields are plowed, plowed and the plants whose roots hold the soil in place are removed, topsoil becomes vulnerable to erosion by wind and water. The addition of fertilizers helps replace some of the nutrients that are depleted by topsoil erosion. But there are other substances in topsoil that fertilizers cannot provide. Topsoil contains trace minerals as well as organisms such as earthworms, which aerate aerate the soil and provide space for plant roots to grow, and nitrogen bacteria, which take nitrogen out of the air and make it available to plants. Topsoil also has an abundance of organic matter, including facial fecal material from organisms that live in the soil and dead, and dead and dying organisms such as grasses and insects. As organic material decomposes, it releases nutrients back into the soil. To maintain the fertility of their land, many farmers use methods that help preserve topsoil, such as those shown in figure 2711. When fertilizers are necessary, responsible farmers carefully monitor their use to prevent runoff into streams. Because fertilizers are expensive, farmers also save money by using only as much as the plants require. Methods used by farmers to selectively apply fertilizers where they will provide the greatest benefit, including soil, analysis, careful, careful mapping of fields, and monitoring of plant growth. Forestry. The cleaning of for forested land is another, the clearing of forested land is another way in which topsoil is lost. Worldwide, thousands of hectares, heck acres of forest are cut down annually to meet the demand of firewood, charcoal, paper, and lumber. In many parts of the world, the clearing of forest land results in deforestation which is the removal of trees from a forested area without adequate replanting. Deforestation often involves clear cutting, the complete removal of all, in the, of all the trees in an area. Clear cutting may result in the loss of topsoil through erosion and in the clogging of nearby streams with excess sediment. Fortunately, the negative environment impacts of deforestation can be minimized through the practices of select Div logging, as shown in Figure 2712, and the retention of buffer zones of trees along steam beds. In selection logging, workers remove only designated trees rather than clearing the entire forest. This practice reduces the amount of ground left bare and thus helps prevent erosion. In the United States, new logging laws require that buffer zones of trees be left alone left along the banks of streams. Buffer zones of trees slow runoff by catching the sediment that has been eroded from bare ground before it reaches streams. Urban development. Do you live in the country or in a town or city? As the human population continues to increase more and more, people live in cities and towns. For example, 70% of the population in North America now lives in urban and suburban areas, and an estimated 5 billion people worldwide will be living in cities and towns by the year 2025. The development of land for the growth of urban areas has many impacts on the environment. When towns and cities expand into rural areas, natural habitats are lost as forests are cleared and wetlands are filled to provide land to, for roads, houses, and other buildings. When land is prepared for construction, erosion of topsoil often increases until new landscaping can't be established. 
Development also takes land away from agricultural use, which puts pressure on the remaining farmland for increased production. Other problems are created when concrete and asphalt cover large land areas. Because there are few opportunities for rainwater to soak into the ground, groundwater supplies are not recharged and flooding increases during heavy rains. Increasing urbanization also produces large volumes of solid waste as illustrated in figure 2713. Each person in the United States generates an average of 1.5 kilograms of solid waste per day. Where does it all go? Much of it is buried in landfills. People once thought that because buried waste was out of sight, it is no longer a problem. Many old landfills, however, are creating pollution problems as dangerous chemicals leak out the contaminated water supplies. Additional contamination occurs as a result of industrial processes. Heavy metals such as lead, such as lead and mercury and poisonous chemicals such as arsenic are byproducts of many industrial processes that can pollute the soil and groundwater in urban areas. Some of these types of contamination, some of this type of contamination was caused by industri industries that operated before the dangers of improving waste disposal were known. However, accidental spills and illegal dumping continues to be a source of contamination. Even though it is impossible, even though it is possible to clean up contaminated areas, the process involved is doing in doing so are difficult and extremely expensive. Solutions. Although urban development can create many environmental problems, most of these problems can be solved. People are becoming aware of the need to protect the environment and companies um, and communities are making increased efforts to do so. For example, developers are often required to place barriers such as those shown in figure 2714 around construction sites to catch sediment from increased erosion. In the United States, wetlands are now recognized as valuable ecosystems that are protected from development. In some cases, if developers destroy a wetland area, they are required to build wetlands somewhere else in return. Problems associated with water disposal are more difficult, primarily because the volume of trash is so large. Modern landfills, however, are very different from the dumps of the past. They are carefully designed to minimize leakage of toxic liquids, Im impermeable clay or plastic layers are also beneath a landfill, and each day's trash is compacted by huge machines and buried under a large layer of to reduce the volume and eliminate wind-blown trash. Ventilation pipes and landfills release methane and other gases that are generated as the garbage de decomposers. A diagram of a modern landfill is shown in 2715. Several methods are available for cleaning up industrial toxic waste sites. In one method, all the contaminated soil is removed and incinerated at temperatures high enough to destroy the toxic chemicals. The drawbacks of this method is that it can be very expensive when large volumes of soil are involved and it also produces toxic ash. Another method that shows great promise is bio bioremediation. The use of organisms to clean up toxic waste, illustrated in figure 2716. In some cases, natural occurring bacteria can be found that eat toxic materials and convert them to less harmful substances. This technique has been especially useful for contamination based upon spilled gasoline and oil.